After the U.S. severed ties with Tehran in the 1980s and left the country with an air fleet of outdated F-5s and F-14 Tomcats, the Iranian Air Force appeared doomed. To the surprise of the world, Iran nonetheless abruptly announced the introduction of the nation's first indigenous aircraft in 2013, and it wasn't just any old fighter. It was a fifth-generation stealth fighter called the Kahir 313, also known as the Conqueror. The Kahir shape was similar to that of the Lockheed F-117 Nighthawk, and it had advanced coatings on its body panels to reduce its radar signature and an aerodynamic design to improve maneuverability. The aircraft could carry more than 2,000 pounds of ordnance and had two internal compartments. Iran repeatedly assured people for years that the Conqueror would take to the skies in the coming years, despite the fact that very little information about the Kahir was ever made public. Although Tehran has the technological capability to fully develop a functional fifth-generation stealth fighter, Western analysts have expressed concerns about this. Aviation Enigma people all over the world are aware that the governments of Iran, the United States, and other Western powers have an adversarial relationship in recent memory. However, it hasn't always been like this. The imperial state of Iran maintained close ties with the British Empire, France, and the United States following World War I and the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. The relationships with the West paid off during the Cold War, despite there being a few tense moments during World War II. Iran was not an exception during this time when the US and the Soviet Union sought to influence as many nations as they could. Since the early 1950s, the US has assisted Iran in developing its nuclear program and decided to offer military assistance to further their regional relations. Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the last Shah of Iran, appreciated the assistance in modernizing the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The first American aircraft to be used by Iran was the Northrop F-5 Freedom Fighter, and USAF pilots and technicians started training Iranian personnel on how to operate it. The dependable F-5 was great for combating Soviet MiGs, but Iran would eventually acquire even more potent aircraft. Iran now has one of the most potent air forces in the Middle East thanks to the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II and the cutting-edge Grumman F-14 Tomcat. However, Iran's dominance and prosperity were abruptly destroyed by the 1979 revolution, which led to the US cutting off political and military ties with Tehran. Following a rise in hostility between the two countries, there was unofficial fighting between Iran and Iraq in the 1980s. Iran turned to espionage and the black market when it ran out of replacement parts for its outdated American aircraft to keep its fighters operational. There was a cap, though, and when it was reached, the government started working on an ambitious project, creating its own fighter. Tehran could have requested assistance from Russia and China to increase the number of foreign fighters in its air force, but for some reason in the 2010s, Iran chose to develop its own stealth fighter. The F-313, Kahir or Conqueror, a locally developed fighter for the nation's air force, was unveiled as a result of a collaboration between Iran Aircraft Manufacturing Industries Corporation and Iran Aircraft Industries. Spread out a static mock-up of Iran's F-313 design was unveiled in early February 2013 in front of a sea of flashing cameras from state media and the watchful eyes of prominent military leaders, catapulting it onto the world stage. Tehran's regime made the audacious claim that the aircraft was not only airworthy but also one of the planet's most cutting-edge fighter jets during a solemn ceremony that also marked the revolution's anniversary. The declaration boldly elevated the Conqueror above both the praised F-22 Raptor and the F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. A wide range of the fighter's distinctive qualities were covered in the defense minister's press release to the state media, including its remarkably low radar cross-section, a tactical benefit that would enable the Kahir to fly covertly at low altitudes and easily avoid enemy radar systems. During a moving speech, former Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad praised the Kahir 313 as evidence of Iran's growing military technological independence, saying, quote, now the speed of Iran's development in science and technology does not concern us. Blueprint of a conqueror depends on circumstances, it depends on our will. In order to calm the critics ahead of the launch, the Iranian Mare News Agency published an article describing the special features of the Kahir. The air induction system on the Kahir used two inlets and ducts. Radar reflectivity was decreased due to the engine's indirect angle to the inlets. Additionally, the hot exhaust gas was cooled before it left the exhaust system by mixing with the cold air through the inlet ducts, which reduced the amount of heat that reached the surface of the Kahir. 
The agency claimed the aircraft used radar absorbent materials to lessen radar reflection and absorb wave energy to further support its stealth nature. The Conqueror's payload capacity for armament was over 2,000 pounds, divided between two compartments. Iran claimed the fighter would wreak havoc wherever it went using bombs, intelligent guided missiles, and air-to-air -air missiles. The mock-up of the Conqueror revealed that it had a canopy with 360-degree visibility, making it ideal for ground assaults, air operations, and low-altitude flights. Eight analog displays, including multi-function display technology, were present in the cockpit. The Kahur's large vertical tail surfaces and angled wings favored stability and maneuverability while in flight from an aerodynamic perspective. The Kahur successfully balanced speed, maneuverability, and firepower with its total weight of 14 tons. During fire following the aircraft's 2013 introduction and the extensive claims made about it, the design quickly took over online forums, aviation magazines, and social media. The design was criticized by many people who claimed it belonged in a video game. Others demonstrated that Iran could create a fighter by stealing components from other aircraft. While the unveiling aroused curiosity and displayed Iranian ambition, it also immediately sparked a wave of doubt and criticism from around the world. Military and aviation experts alike came to the same conclusion after looking at the photos and videos of the aircraft, there was no way this aircraft would be operational. The instrument panel was more reminiscent of a contemporary small Cessna turboprop than a fifth-generation fighter, while the cockpit was equipped with a variety of commercial aviation products. All claims made by Iranian authorities seem to be refuted by the aircraft's tiny dimensions. It is so small that it would have trouble fitting the necessary avionics, fuel, engine, components, and weapons bays, let alone a pilot in the ejection seat. Although the Kahur 313's technical specifications claimed it could transport two 2,000-pound bombs and at least six air-to-air -air missiles without a weapon bay, this feat was deemed to be impossible. One aviation expert claims that the engine's exhaust duct is devoid of a nozzle, making any use of an afterburner likely to instantly ignite the entire airframe. Even the wings of the Conqueror have been compared to those of the vintage MiG-17 model by one keen observer. Some military analysts in the West have dared to assert that the announcement of a stealth aircraft was merely a ruse to hide the flaws in their outmoded fighter fleet. Iran has been subject to sanctions for many years, which prevent it from purchasing the necessary parts required to build cutting-edge stealth aircraft. Therefore, it seems extremely unlikely that Iran has the engineering methods and know-how necessary to produce a stealth aircraft. Iran insisted that their fighter jet was real and in the air despite the fact that it was universally acknowledged to be a hoax and a mere propaganda stunt designed to impress the domestic audience. The Kahur was allegedly being maneuvered in anticipation of taxi tests in a later image from 2013, but this was quickly disproved as a Photoshop attempt. 929, Iran released a video purportedly showing the fighter jet in flight along with footage of the Kahur F-313 taxiing around a runway in an effort to inspire confidence in 2017. However, experts were not persuaded, with some claiming that the purported test flight was simply a drone. Years passed during which there was seemingly no discussion of the project's viability or future operational plans. Despite complaints and skepticism, the Kahur 313 saga took an unexpected turn. Iran made an announcement in February 2023, exactly 10 years after the alleged fifth-generation Kahur 313 stealth fighter jet was unveiled, that appeared to rehash remarks made earlier. The Kahur fighter project had fully matured technologically, according to the Iranian Defense Ministry. But instead of a manned fighter jet, the country has chosen to broaden the project's scope and get it ready to become an unmanned aerial vehicle, or UAV. This declaration came after Russia extensively stationed Iran's Shahid-class kamikaze drones in Ukraine. These drones have successfully attacked Kiev's energy and military infrastructure since 2022, demonstrating the tactical effectiveness of unmanned conflict. Iran has recently increased its efforts in the UAV industry in response to these developments. An Iranian official confirmed that the nation would unveil several iterations of the Kahur within the year, in addition to the unmanned version.